course, we're going to be looking at John Mayer's Sucker. This is a live rendition of an unreleased track that has never appeared on an album, but it's a crowd favor and I get a ton of requests for it, so I'm glad to bring it to you guys today. If you want some information on how I transcribed it and some of the decisions I made, I've added that information in the About section below. So without further ado, these are the first four measures of Sucker. <laughs> So we start off with two open E's and then snatching this chord up here. Actually, it's actually not two open E's, it's a harmonic of the 2.7 fret. But you can skip that if you want and just do two open E's. And this is the start of a lot of opposition between the thumb and the first three fingers. So the first chord we encounter is like a B, but it's just the top half of a B5 power chord. So we take our first finger and lay it on the A9 strings under there all in a row and we go like that so we got our thumb hicked in to do the open E and then we snatch back with these chords then we get into some of the rhythmic stuff we have a muted pull up with the two fingers here this kind of thing a muted like that and then a rake of the two open strings so from the top That's what we have for the first half of the measure. Sounds like that to speed, but slow down, it's... Finally, just pulling that chord with all the open strings. After that, we go into this crazy chord. And that chord here is like an A sus4 with a B in the root. Let's take our thumb, put it on the E7 for the B, we're muting the 5th string, and our 2nd and 3rd fingers are fretting the D7 and the G7 respectively, and the bottom two strings are open. And we do this, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, like that, before moving to this bend. The bend is 1st finger on the high E, 2nd finger on the B8, and we're going to bend up that B8 while we pluck both twice, and then we end off with two bottom open strings. So measure one from the top slow, with the harmonic even. Measure two starts getting into the groove. Slowly introducing it. So we're starting off with the open E. Chord and a slap. So that chord is a new one. Forget the chord you've played in the first measure, you'll never play that again. Slide the whole thing down one string, so we have the bar beginning on the D9. That's an E. It's the top half of a E power chord. Slap. First finger pops an open D. Do our E bar chord again. Another slap. So that second chord we just went into is a B5. So we have the B, two, four, five, and then the octave of the B, B5. And we'll be doing a lot of that later. Before going into the A sus4 with the B in the root, which I'm just going to call the B chord after. We let that hang a bit and come down with a slap flick. And by slap flick I mean we're coming down with our thumb to hit the sixth string. First finger is tucked, it's going to explode out and brush contact those fretted strings at the 7th fret before doing an upstroke with the first finger and the two middle strings. So slow. So the slaps are starting. And he's slowly building into that part. Measures 3 and 4 we're going to do it together because there's a lick right in the middle. Uh, ending measure 3 and starting measure 4. So let's look at them both together. starts off very similar to measure two, except we don't grab all of that B5, we just grab the two middle strings. It sounds a lot different, instead of, it sounds, 
more subdued. You can do it either way if you want. Before slapping and going to that chord at the, the root of the B. That changes quite a bit. The rhythm we're going to do there sounds like this. Like this. So the rhythm is... everyone that covers this on YouTube that I've seen, you'll hear this. It's actually more comfortable and fun to play that. But in this section and in about 60% of the other ones, he's actually adding that extra little bass note in parentheses. And that means you play it a bit softer. So piano attack, thumb and fingers. Lightly with the thumb, brush that bass note. And then first finger will hit the high E. And then come down with the slap. see the other way here and there, but for the most part they're always like this. And another... When you're slapping, you're going to hear a sympathetic sounding of the open A. Now it comes out more on other guitars, <laughs> this one not so much. But we're slapping or we're not muting that A so much, so you get that. And that sets up a neat bass line. It almost sounds like it's going like this. So. Then we're ending off the measure by going to that lick, which starts like this. That ends off measure three, and then measure four starts with. Same thing. Let's look at that lick. So we're doing the open E, hammering on to the third fret of the, of the low E, and then that ends off measure three. Measure four has us sounding this E at the D2 on the D string with our first finger. So measure four starts like this, like that. And there's two E notes sounding, the low E and then this octave up E here, but we're only plucking one, the higher one, the first finger. Our thumb is not going, we're not going thumb, first finger, pluck at the same time, the low E and this higher E. We're actually only plucking the higher one. And the low E gets sounded, that's also in parenthesis, because it's coming off a pull-off, like that. So we're doing this, pulling off from the third fret, and then striking that D string at the second fret back, striking it, and doing a slap. Let's hear it for context. So that's uh, measure four starting off like this. We have the low E slap, low E. And then we have our chord. We're actually adding the low E as we do that on both the E and the B5 slap. Back to this B chord. That one's exactly the same as the previous measure. This one's a bit different. So to hear what I did there, instead of doing a double pump on the bass line here, I actually lipped over the first two strings and I'm hitting the fourth string and then the high E and then slap. And you'll see this here and there as well. So he either does this or this. Very subtle. And it's thumb alternating with the first finger, and he's leaping over sometimes. And ending off with an open E. Let's play that slow. And I accented that one a bit more. Measure 5 and 6 are the beginning of the singing, verse 1. It sounds like this. That's verse 5 and 6. Very similar, small differences. It starts off with, oh, the preceding verse ends with an open E. And then the first part of measure 5 starts with the open E and the chord at the same time. So you get this kind of sense of a... measure and then another low E starting the next. So you get this constant between measures that keeps it going forward. So we're doing um, the low E and the chord snatch at the same time to start off measure five. Slap 
we have the low E and the B5 together, then the low E by itself, and then just the top end of the B5, the slap, go to the chord uh, with the B note. And this is a long one, we don't have the little bass pump in there, and we just do an upstroke on the high E, slap, pull the chord again, high E, slap, and then another open, and then that goes into for measure 6. So 5 and 6 are very similar. Measure 7 and 8 introduce some nice chords. We're starting off measure seven at the fifth position. We have our thumb hooked over the E5. Then we're doing our uh, D shape, but starting at the D5. And that is an A7. So we piano attack that, let it hang out there, slap, slide the whole thing down a fret, do the same thing, piano attack. This time though, quicker, we come up with our finger to snatch the bottom part of the chord and slap it again. Then we have the open E, and then with our thumb, slide up to the ninth fret, and then strike the high part of this chord. And this is a uh, B suspended fourth with a C sharp in the root. So it sounds like that. So I'm using my thumb on the E9, first finger on the B7, third finger on the G9, and then the second finger on the D9. Now we slide all the way down to the second fret, thumb on the second fret, and that's an F sharp seven. We have a slap and then an open low E. Let's take that one from the top. And then measure eight starts like this. So we do this interesting chord. Got my thumb. The second fret, first finger is barring from the D2 all the way down. Pinky is on the E4. So I piano, piano attack that thing, let it hang out there, do a slap, quickly come back with some harmonics at the 12th fret. So another slap, and then we're doing a B7 down here. And then a slap, and then an upstroke with the two open strings. And back to back, uh, uh, so one more time on that last measure, measure right, I went over that a bit too quick. We do this chord, which I guess you could call, uh, what would you call that? It's like an F sharp minor nine. We let that hang out a bit, we do a slap, and the middle A sounds too. We do some harmonics, another slap. We do the B7 down here. So our second finger is on the A2, first finger is on the D1, third finger is on the G2, the last two strings are open. Now it's kind of light and airy. Slap, and then uh, stroke with the middle strings. Let's do the whole thing slow. Measures 9 and 10 end off verse 1, feature a new lick in the middle, sounds something like this. So they both start with an open E, slap, and another open E, before we get into the open E with the chord, the B5 by itself, another slap, and then movement to the B root there. Once we're at the B root chord here, we do the same rhythm, but this time the second note is going to be of the high variety. We're going to use our thumb, jump over the low E again, and hit the D7 like this. That's what I mean there. And it, normally we do a slap here and go into the old lick. The old lick was like this. The new lick is like this. So in place of the slap, we're just going to pull off from the E5 to the open E, and then come up with a hammer-on on the E3, 
and then measure 10 starts off similar to the old one. Let's take that from the top. So that's the trick there. Coming off of this B, B root chord here, you're not going to do the last slap. You're going to go immediately to the E5, pull off to the open E, hammer on to the E3, and then measure 10 starts like this. This time on the B chord measure 10, we do the low. Ending off the low E. Let's do those both slow. Measures 11 and 12 start off verse 2, and a small change is introduced with the B5 chord. Did you, did you catch it? Starts off with piano attack on the E chord, slap E by itself, and then the high part, and then to the B position, and this has got the uh, D5, D7. Measure 12 sounds like this. That's the new part. So, what we're doing is we're kind of leaning down on our bar at the B. So, it's piano attack on the E chord, slap, we do the B5, piano attack with the low E. And this time we make sure that our bar is laying down so we get this high E9. And we just take our finger and we just rake up the bottom three strings, slap, and then go back to the B position. Let's do those too slow. So that's the variation. And lastly on this section there is an implied bass line that you can kind of just hear on the tip. And that comes from the slapping and the A sounding. for it. So again, if you can make that A sound with your slaps, you can add that really cool element. Measures 13 and 14 are the second pass through something we've seen before. Sounds a bit different. Sounds like this. So that bit at the fifth position with the uh, A7 chord. So we're doing the just the root note by itself, and the high part of the chord, slap, and then the whole chord, and then just the high part with a finger up stroke here, slap, and then instead of a open string to the nine, there's actually two nines. It's kind of a nice change. And uh, we do a low F sharp here, full piano attack, and then come up with the high part, and then an open string. So that's thirteen. After that, the next measure, we have that chord again. And uh, the difference here is we don't let it hang out. We go. So I'll show you that. So we do that chord we saw before. Slap it. And I let off with the pinky here. And I'm just concentrating on the thumb and finger fretting portions of the chord. So we kind of do a piano attack on that. And then an upstroke. Slap. Switch over to the B7. And we do that. Let it hang out there. Slap. And we pluck the B7 again. This time we kind of come up on the high E string. Slap. And then open E. So. From the top. is a small filler coming off the tail end of verse 2 and before the chorus. Ending with an open A string leading into the chorus. So that is E, slap, E, and then a bunch of piano attacks. So we're going to be plucking the bass part of the chord and the high part. And 
And that very last portion, we actually do a piano attack, and then a low E by itself, and then piano attack again for the last slap, and then the open A. Measure 16 and 17 are the start of the first chorus. So ending off in an open A, and then all the slaps, try to sound that A again. Every time you can, folks. So we're bouncing between uh, two suspended second chords, an A suspended second with a uh, sharp 11, and then the A suspended second. And a suspended second chord, a suspended second chord is where you take the third note of the chord and you just replace it with the second. Suspended fourth is where you take the third and suspend with, with the, the fourth, perfect fourth. So let us build that chord. So we have the A string as our root, A, one, two, three, four, five. The E note at the D2 is our fifth, and we have to find a second in there. So we're looking for a B. There's our B on the G4. And then at the B4, we have the sharp 11. And that's our A sus 2 sharp 11. The reason we call this a sharp 11 is because if you go all the way up the scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 on up is sharp. That's how you get that. That's why it gets that monstrous name. The next chord is just taking the same fingering, taking the pinky, and dropping it on the B5. And that is just an A sus 2 because that note there is just an octave of the E. So enough of that. We bounce between these two chords in this manner. If we're doing that, so slap, slapping on the fifth string, because that's where your thumb is going to plug the note. And the final uh, A sus2 chord, we're going to do a little up stroke with our finger. We're going into the slap, trying to sound that open A, and then sound the open E. That's measure 16. Measure 17 sounds like this. Like that. So we're going back to our E chord. We're going to do a piano attack. Slap, piano attack again. Upstroke on the top part of the chord. Slap, open E. And transition to this B minor 6 chord with a D in the root. End off in the A. That chord, we take our first finger and bar it on the D9, all the way down, three strings, and then we have our third finger on the G11. And then our thumb goes over on the E10 to give us that D in the, in the bass. Let's do that measure slow one more time, 17. And both together slow. is in uh, Man on the Side, which makes me think that Sucker was written around the same time. Maybe with the help of Clay Cook, his uh, across the hall roommate at Berkeley. Measures 18 and 19. So we're playing a bit with the sus chord rhythm. So we're doing a piano attack off the top, slap, and then arpeggiating it into the second chord. I do just in time fretting for that. Right around here, I start worrying about the pinky that I left off. So to speed, that's going into. So that chord's pretty popular. It's an F sharp minor seven. So we have our first finger barring at the A9 all the way down. Third finger is on the D11. Second finger is on the B10. And the rhythm we do there is similar to what we've seen before. Full piano attack. Slap. Piano attack. Grab the top portion of it with your finger. Slap. And then we do this neat transition. To end it off. 
And the transition is, is transitioning from that F sharp minor 7 to this um, E chord with a G sharp in the bass here at the uh, A11. So we do this. That's how we do that. So we do one last note with this F sharp minor 7th fretted. We do the A9 and then switch fingers around to do the second chord, which is basically dropping the first finger down a string to bar at the D all the way down. Third finger is popping in on the A11. And then extra bass note on the chord, slap, and then into the open. Okay, let's do that part slow. So that's a neat little transition that comes quite naturally after you do it a couple times. Both together slow. couple measures. We pluck the B piano style, slap, arpeggiate, and we actually do that little augmentation down there. So instead of, we're doing this. Kind of neat. So the B, slap, and then just before you do the last part, put your pinky down on the B5, slap, and then we do a slap, B, slap, B, slap, and open E. And then we end off with the E chord piano attack. Let that hang out there. A little moving bass note on the open E to our chord with the D in the root, and a slap and an open E. Let's do that slow. Those are 22 and 23, end off the chorus. Starting up here, yet another 7 chord. This is a C sharp 7, similar to the ones we did here. This time we're way up at the 9th fret with our thumb. And the rhythm sounds like this. So we're doing a piano style attack of the chord. Slap, and then we arpeggiate it. When we get to here, we're going to take our third finger and drop it on the G11 and grab the bottom two notes there for slapping, and then ending the measure like that. So that turns that to a, from a C sharp uh, 7 into a C sharp 7 suspended fourth on the A. One more time slow. And then measure 23. So here we're starting with a C sharp minor seventh. We're taking your second finger, barring the E two. Third finger is barring the D two all the way down. Do two of these. Slap. This slap we try as hard as we can to sound that open A before going into this beautiful chord to end it off. Um, back to this F sharp minor seventh. Same chord as up here. Different voicing. So this final chord, that's an A with a B in the root. So we take our thumb, put it on the E7, that's our B. We mute the fifth string. Third finger is on the D7. Second string is on, second finger is on the G6. Last two ring. And it sounds really nice when you get the A slap going. slow. Let that hang out there and then go into the next. And measures, um, the measures that follow verse 3 are very similar to verse 1, so you can just do that in place. 
So verse 3 and chorus 2 are very similar to what we've seen before, so you can spot the tab for the differences. But coming out of chorus 2, that transition's a bit different, so it's worth mentioning here. It sounds like this. So starting at measure 38, we have our F sharp minor 7th here. chord, slap, chord, and then brush the high part, slap, and then we have an open E into that nice A with the B in the root, slap, and then we end off with a bar on the D9 and G9, and that ends off the measure. Going into the measure after that, we start with a low E, slap, and then full piano attack on the chord, brush stroke on the high part, slap, and we start this. So the very, one thing to help you remember the rhythm there is the very last chorded note is a bit longer than the other one. Like that. So let's look at measure 39. And to speed both of those together. Measures 40 and 41 are the bridge. So we're starting off with the G7. And the rhythm is like this. I'm trying really hard to slap and hit that A. I find sometimes lifting off sounds it more because I want this kind of bass movement. Implied. So we start off with the G7, we pluck it, piano attack, we slap, try to sound that A, ooh that one sounded good, piano attack again with an up stroke brush, slap, and an open E to move to the next chord, and then the exact same thing. slide up to the B chord we encountered in the verse, and we do the bass note of that, and then snatch the top part, slap, full chord, on the top part, slap, and then slide down to the easiest chord in the whole song, E7. So we take our finger and we put it on the G1, and we do kind of like a piano attack, and then the top part with our finger, slap, piano attack off of the low E. Let's do those two together slow. And then the speed. Last three measures of the bridge starting with 42. Starting at measure 42. It's a nice thing. We have a C sus 2 chord, but we're taking away the C root and we're adding an A root. It really changes the personality of the chord. And we're doing this rhythm. So it's piano attack, slap, piano attack, strum the bottom part of the chord, top part of the chord, I mean, high part. And then open E to transition to up here at the 10th fret. So we actually have like a little bass line. We play that E10 by itself, and then we do the top part of this chord. And this is a D, D7 sus4. Hmm. And we're going to change that into a D7 by just coming down a string, fretting the G 
11 now, like that. Turns it into a seventh chord, same ones we've seen here. So, ending off with the open string. Let's do that slow. So you do that little bass walk up. Um, strike the top part of that chord, slap. Change the fingering into a seventh chord. That gets you there. After that, we're down here to a G minor seventh. You've seen that before, thumb on the E3 and then first finger barring from the D3 all the way down. I think we had an F sharp minor seventh before. And then we do a little slap and do our A chord with the B in the root. And we let that hang out there quite a while before we start off with two bass notes here. And then we grab the whole thing and we just do eight of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then end off with an open string. Let's do the whole thing slow. three there's some variations that occur around measure 56 and then we're into the uh, outro so let's look at that we're starting off with the F sharp major seventh and then up to the A chord with the B in the root nice accent here like that so and then we're into this that next measure has a G sharp minor and I've seen other videos where Mayer will use a traditional bar chord for that but uh, I don't hear that note too much so I think we can get away with the broom handle grip here although I've got no video to tell me otherwise and the way we play these is kind of like sharp and abrupt with rests in between. Like that. So they're not hanging out there. It's actually a nice little change. So it's... These ones we hang out there. And that second chord is a B, C sharp in the root. So we do a regular notes so that we would play a B major chord. Take our thumb, move it from the B note to the C sharp note at the ninth fret of the E. And we just uh, extend these chords out, slap and then open, back to the F sharp minor seventh, and a slap and then up to the A with the B in the root, and then there's a little slap and then two pumps on the bass note before grabbing everything piano attack, including the high E. So we're going to use all our fingers, including our pinky. And then we're into the intro. Let's just go through that whole thing slow. attention to uh, measure 57 that G sharp minor here uh, that particular move so it's bam, slap bam. we have a finger muted upstroke and then a slap so the rhythm is really nice little rhythmic trick in there and then a speed that's starting at measure 60. This is the ending of the song where he's doing that scat singing to end everything off. And the rhythm here changes more than you'd think. Let's just go through the first three measures starting at 60. So a couple things off the bat. We're ending 
the measures with the leading high part of the E chord that ends off the measures, and then 61 will start with an open E. Another thing is we throw an extra open E in front of the B chord part. Let's just go through measure 60 slow and I'll show you what I mean. So we're starting off measure 60 with just the two middle fretted chords being struck with the thumb on the bass note. So not the full piano attack, just the two middle chords in the bass note. Slap, and then the full piano attack, the bass note by itself, and then an upstroke on the high part before going to a slap. Here we throw an extra open E in, and then into the B part. And that B part changes a bit. We have a full piano chord, long, and then an upstroke on the high E part, slap, and then a piano attack, followed by just the bass note, and then the high E part, slap, and then ending off with the high part of the bar chord. One more time slow. So that B chord rhythm is the same pretty much from now on. It's Just to demonstrate that subtle difference in the B part, with the addition of the extra open E, let's look at verse 1. We go right into the B, versus the outro. So we have the last chord of measure 60 is the high, e, uh, high part of the E chord. And measure 61 starts with the low E. Slap, and we do this. So, uh, E by itself, slap, this is measure 61. Then we do a piano attack on the E chord, piano attack with the B5 chord, and then we do the top part of it, a little upstroke with the fingers, slap, and then go into the B part. Let's do those two together. Another thing on this part, I found myself uh, as I was doing this kind of chord, I would lift everything off and almost do a bar with the bottom ninth fret strings. In the recording, I believe I hear with all the fingers pressed down, we have the B5 in place and then we're just barring the high E at the nine. As I kind of play through it, I find that if you just do the bottom, two strings it works good too so you can do uh, either or let's go from 61 into 62 so 62 is this in measure 63 as well. So you can see these little lead ups go from two, two, and uh, etc. in 63. Let's play the whole thing slow just so we can leave it in context. <laughs> first three or four introductory measures for the outro, he settles into one of two things. Or, as he's doing the scat singing. So this is the one he actually ends the song off with. He, he, he does three repeats of this and dynamically fades out. Occasionally, a couple measures before that, you'll hear a... So you're starting off measure with the open E and then the, the rushed chord. So it's either... And uh, he ends.
tunes off the song like that. So that is that. This song is ripe for uh, ripe for improv stuff. In fact, other versions of the tune, like the Eddie's Attic stuff, he'll go arpeggiate the first E chord. Because there are a lot of chords that you can substitute. tab is everything that happened as the track sounded. So if you hear a weird thing on the track, well, it should be in the tab. That's kind of note for note, measure for measure. That's the way I write them. But uh, for learning the song, you can probably get away with learning the intro, the first verse, first chorus, uh, some of the little variations, the middle part, and then the outro, and then you're good to go. Use that stuff as a roadmap. There's no need to learn this thing, every little nuance. So take it, make it your own. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm glad to bring this one because there's been a lot of requests. Blah, blah, blah. Oh my god, he talks so much. I just need to shut up. <laughs>